brought underwear and socks to change every day, mm-hmm. but that's about it. Oh, you changed underwear? <laughs> yeah, I flipped them inside out. Oh, okay, that's yeah. what I'm gonna say. <laughs> uh, hey guys, Remy Tentali, one of the lay pastors here at Riding the River. Thank you all for joining the podcast here at Riding the River Cowboy Church. Uh, we have Jeremy, the pastor here at Riding the River, and then we have Ty Fitzpatrick joining us today from God's fellowship that's or, close god's country fellowship. god's country fellowship <laughs> that's right hondo texas yeah hondo texas but uh we thank you all for tuning in today the direction of this podcast is going to be tying back to their trip that they just took in the mountains uh and so we're gonna i got some questions for them and uh we're just gonna kind of dive into that and see what the trip was like and what uh god kind of really revealed to y'all <laughs> on that trip so jeremy how did this trip come about? Like, what was the idea behind it, and what exactly, how it came about? Okay, so, uh, man, we got. I think we got to start it last year. Last year. Yeah, yes. with uh, Joe Cox, yes, uh, which he's been doing this for, I mean, like 10 or years or so. Yeah. Uh, but he's got a little ministry that he does himself. What's, what does he call that? It's like Luke something Ministries. <laughs> I don't know. We'll I look it up. Asked him. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> yep. uh, anyways, Joe Cox, great guy. He's associate pastor at Bar None Cowboy Church. Uh, but he takes a group of pastors or people that are in ministry every year, and he takes them on a, a, a pack trip up in uh, Pagosa Springs uh, for a week up in the mountains. And uh, last year, Ty and I got invited to go, and, and uh, Ty was chomping at the bit to go, and I didn't really want to go. Uh, I don't know if that's completely accurate. I think it was, I'm going to go if Jeremy goes. Yeah. Well, so I wanted to go, but like always, right? Like right before God's about to do something in your life, he uh, the enemy throws roadblocks. Yes, sir. So, so like the week that we're getting ready to go to Colorado, uh, my horse rips half his foot off. Uh, I got a flat tire on the truck and the trailer. Uh, the kids knocked over the hat rack, and uh, and the antlers on the hat rack poked a hole through all three of my hats. And uh, when I put my hat on, something was stinging my head, and I pulled it off, and there was a scorpion in it. And I'm like, Lord of mercy, we have got to go on this trip. Uh, so anyway, that was last year. We went on the trip and just had a great time. Had you know, like, uh, uh, and Ty and I are close, but, like, man, we got real close on that trip. Uh, and I... I told Ty last year, I was like, hey, do you want to do this again next year, just us? Like, there there wasn't a whole lot to this. Like, we can come up here and starve to death for a week. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so that's it, right? Like, yes, just sir. all through the year, we kind of planned and, and got equipment together and, and uh, pulled the trigger on it. And, man, we kind of killed two birds with one stone this year. We left a day early and stopped in Las Vegas, New Mexico, and spent the night and preached at a church there Sunday and then pushed up into Pagosa Springs and stayed the week uh, horseback out in the wilderness. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And so, Ty, what, like, on this trip, uh, I understand, like, he had some things to do in, at that other church and stuff, so were you just, like, really chomping at the bit to go and get on the trailhead? Uh, uh be honest with you, no, not really. No? No. No. Uh, I have a hard time going on vacations, and I think mm-hmm. if 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 Jeremy wouldn't have been there, uh, to kind of push me along, even over the past year and in the year before that, and it was like, man, I don't, I really don't want to go unless Jeremy. Goes. I'll go if mm-hmm. Jeremy goes. And uh, this year is pretty much the same thing. It's like when when he's calling me, he's like, man, I'm getting this equipment, I'm getting this together. Oh, you need to try this food, so on and so forth. I was like. Oh man, he's really going through with it. So. <laughs> so. And, and then on my end, I was like, I got to go because Ty's counting on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so uh, yeah, that's that's uh, kind of my perspective. I'm I'm horrible about taking vacations. I, I I feel guilty about it. I always think about the things I should be doing, and so um, I'm very thankful that my brother here pushed me along to, or drug me along uh, to go through with that because it's, it was really what I needed. Yeah, that's good. Now, so, like, you brought up Joe Cox's ministry, and so, like, just like what you guys did a year ago, uh, <clears throat> I did there at uh, Double N Cowboy Church a few mm-hmm. years back, 
And I know that, like, so I've got to see kind of what it looked like as a packing trip with Joe and uh, the mules and everything and, like, the types of food that we'd pack in and what all that looked like. So would one of you like to explain, like, kind of what that looked like for you? Did you guys take multiple horses, what it looked like packing in, what type of food you guys packed in? Just because, like, with Joe's ministry... It, it, it's all about serving to those pastors. And so, like, how did you guys go about not having someone there to serve you? Oh, I'll tackle this first. Go ahead. Uh, so, you're right. Like, when we go with Joe, like, you don't have to do anything but show up. And uh, you probably gain five to ten pounds. Probably. Uh, we, I ate more moon pies than I've ate <laughs> since I was uh, a toddler, probably. Uh, so yeah, Joe takes very good care of you. You're served, uh, quite a bit. So for us, I was like, we ain't doing that. <laughs> we're not yeah. packing all that stuff in. So we took, uh, one pack horse mm -hmm. and we were able to pack everything in. So we went, we went light on food. We got the, uh, mountain house meals, like the freeze dried meals. I had like another brand, the peak brand. Peak, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, they were good. We ate three meals a day and had some snack stuff and and i called joe and told him what we were planning on doing because we got up there just a few days by, as they were leaving mm -hmm. uh and uh you know he gave me some pointers because he goes up there hunting a few times a year and he said you'll be surprised how light you can get back in there uh when it's just two of you you know mm -hmm. so man we really weren't burdened at all like it took us uh uh, like it took us a f one day to kind of figure everything out. You know, mm -hmm. I had done a test run with some of the pack saddle stuff at the house, but, like, it was not the same when you get up there. So It never <clears> is. Yeah, so uh, so they say a mule. So, you know, like when you get a pack saddle on, it sticks yeah. out way on the side. And they say a mule, it, like, won't bang into a tree with that stuff where a horse will. Well, let me it's, tell you, that's true. Because <laughs> that that little horse we were packing off of, he did incredible. But man, he rubbed every tree and branch. Uh, I think well, he liked the sound. Oh man, <laughs> like he was raking stuff off the top of it, and like it, it. And I was like, man, Ty, we might have to stop and reposition that load. Yeah. But honestly, by day two, that little horse had it. Like we were, mm -hmm. we weren't even ponying him. We were just tying the lead rope up around the pack saddle, and he'd just follow us everywhere we went. Awesome. Uh, so it was good. I took a new horse up there, that was quite interesting. Uh, <laughs> super good horse, well trained, but definitely raised in an arena. Uh, and and Ty described it best. Ty said that horse is like a homeschool kid that hasn't learned the world is dangerous yet. <laughs> because if you didn't ride that horse every step of the way, he would walk off the mountain. <laughs> like so, you couldn't put your hand down and be like, "Oh man, this is beautiful up here." You'd be like, "Well, bam!" off the side. Like you mm -hmm. had to pick him up and ride him every step. Come to a complete stop. Look around and then ride a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, so answer to your question, we went light, but we never suffered. We were comfortable, and actually, it was it was really enjoyable for my point. Yeah, mm -hmm. very enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. about you, like on equipment and getting back in there? Uh, well, you took care of everything. <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you pretty much tackled the whole situation. I mean, that was uh, again. If it wasn't for Jeremy, I'd I probably <laughs> you'd have been struggling. Well, I don't know about that. I'd ate a lot of fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. So, like, he was talking about, like, through the year, I was like, hey, I got this. Hey, get this food. Uh, so when we got when we got back in there, we were going over food and stuff, and uh, I told him the coffee I bought. And I was like, what would you bring for coffee? He was like, I thought you were bringing the coffee. <laughs> I was like, I, I got enough for it. <laughs> but I didn't. So, like, the last few days, I was cutting the little coffee packets in half. I was like, here, Ty, you can have half. <laughs> He's so sad about it, too. <laughs> yeah. we, we were actually going to... I was like, hey, I learned in Sear school, you can boil uh, pine needles, and it's got the same effect as coffee. So if we had stayed one, one more, more day, day, we were we were that desperate. You were doing an experiment. But we made it on our way out. I got you. I got you. So, Ty, tell me a little bit about, like, the weather you guys experienced there. Oh, because oh, I right. talked to, just like what you would said earlier, Jeremy, how Joe... And his guys went out a few weeks, like the week before you, 
I know they cut caught a lot of rain those last few days. Yeah. And I from talking to you, I know you guys experienced some rain. So what yeah, did that weather look like? Jeremy Jeremy uh, said it best while we were up there that uh, we've seen more rain this week than we have all summer in Texas. You know, oh, wow. it was uh, when we first got there, we were racing a thunderstorm in. Uh, and we were trying to get our get our tent set up, get everything lined out before the rain came. Yeah. And then uh, I think Monday Monday did it rain. One day one day it didn't rain, but it, every day after that it it, it, rained. it rained. Yeah. In the afternoon, so. Uh, but of course I'm I'm eating it up. I'm loving it. Have to wear a jacket. See your breath. I mean, it was just. Yeah. Where where I, uh, where I like to be, where it's nice and cool. Uh, and then the. The last day, there was actually a pretty good thunderstorm and put a pretty good layer of hail on everything. Yeah. Uh, mm. Fortunately, I didn't get any pictures of it, but uh, to me, the weather was perfect. Yeah. 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 Well, and I'll give it to Ty, too. Like, I'll brag on you because, like, I was like, oh, great. It's going to rain every day. And every time, he'd be like, consider it all joy. Consider every- it all joy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I know what the Bible <laughs> says, but still, Ty. And, yeah. uh, man, look, like our tent was good. Our tent never got wet. Nope. Inside, we stayed dry. Uh, yeah. The So the funny story, uh, there's a place in town there where you can go take a shower. Or, you know, you've mm-hmm. been up there. Uh, so from where we camp to the trailhead where the vehicle is, it's about six miles. Uh, so we had been in there three days. You know, you're pretty nasty you know we're wearing the same clothes we brought underwear and socks to change every day mm-hmm. but that's about it Tied oh you in. changed underwear yeah i flipped them inside out okay that's yeah. what i'm gonna say uh, uh, <laughs> so we got this plan right this day we're gonna ride out tie the horses up to a tree unhook the trailer run into town get a shower eat a meal and then come back so the day we did that nice clean feeling good we go get a, a big breakfast and as we're getting back to the trailhead, it just dumps Drops. on us, man. So, so bad that we sit in the truck for about 45 minutes waiting for it to break. The horses are saddled up, just completely soaked. And uh, when it finally, like, kind of broke, like, it's still uh, light rain, but, like, threatening to do more, uh, we jumped on the horses and beelined it back to camp. And that's when all the hail was yes, piled sir. up yes, and... Uh, yeah, so so much for those showers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so much. And dry clothes. Yeah, yeah. And dry, and dry clothes. clothes. Yeah. yeah. Man, you know, like, hearing you guys talk about that, like, I know when I went on the trip, like, the Lord really revealed to me that I needed rest out of that trip. And hearing that, like, you don't take very many vacations and things like that. Do you think that, like, having to experience a day each day through a thunderstorm, God was trying to reveal to you that you can still find rest and peace in your storms. Mm. Oh man, that's a. That'll you know, preach. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, it'll preach. I didn't. I didn't okay. get it that way. Um, you know, one of my prayers for the trip was, "Lord, show up in a great way." Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, coming through the trip, I really didn't realize how bad I needed that. Uh, I didn't realize how how heavy things have been on me. Yeah. And uh, I told Jeremy, I said that this was a trip of healing. I mean, I, I didn't realize what I was hurting from. And just through our conversations, a beautiful thing about just going up there, uh, just me and you, was that there wasn't constant stuff going on. We were able to yeah. do our own thing. I was able to go go sit in the river um, by myself one after. You know, it seemed like it was all day. I don't know how long it was, but just having that alone time, being with God, being alone with with Him, uh, to me, that was more valuable than uh, having a bunch of things mm-hmm. happening or trying to be constantly entertained. Yeah. Um, again, I didn't realize how much I needed that, and I believe He did show up in a great way. I believe that He took a lot of burdens off of me and, and, and things that not just recent problems, I'm talking problems since since childhood, things that um, that I, you know, really struggle up into struggle with up until this day. And uh, through our conversations, it was like, hey, 
those things, those problems counted all joy, you know, those, those things and those problems is the, the hurt and the betrayals and the, and the abandonment issues and all that stuff was God was able to take that and use it as training for where I'm at now. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that was just like, oh, quit worrying about that stuff. Quit worrying, quit wondering, quit, quit playing with the coulda, shouldas, and wouldas and the what ifs and go, man, God has got me. <clears throat> I'm right where God wants me right now. Mm-hmm. And I can use that stuff in a way to glorify his kingdom, to glorify him, uh, to encourage brothers and sisters that might be going through something similar or had gone through something similar. And to me, it was just like, all right, Roger that. And I'm, yeah. It, and it, it's, uh, since I've been back, man, I'm, I'm actually kind of, now I'm chomping at the bit and I'm actually looking forward to next year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. No, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, man, I I gotta chime in on that okay. too because that you know so that's the thing you get asked as a pastor going on a trip like what was the God thing that happened, and I'm you know I'm gonna be honest like I went up there not expecting something like that right I just wanted to get away and just hang out with a buddy in the wilderness, uh, but God has a funny way of wrecking out your plans right mm-hmm. and, and changing things so. The biggest thing from that trip was healing, and and we talked about it a little, but not really a whole lot. Like Ty had told me that, like, man, I got a lot of healing from that trip, and I never said, really, from what? Like, mm-hmm. I'm hearing what you just said yes, sir. for the first time. But for for me, like, I, I had a great childhood, right? Grew up in a godly home. Mm-hmm. I did eight years of my life in the military all during wartime. Like, I joined... September 16th, 2001, and served till February 2009. And I've never been haunted or plagued by a lot of that stuff. But two months leading up to this trip, there are a lot of my friends from the military from service that I haven't seen in years that have been seeking me out because they're coming to Christ. And I've been paying a little bit of attention to that, like what's happening there. So that trip, like we spent a lot of nights around the campfire talking about some of my deployments and stuff and and I didn't get it till like the day after I got home is God was drawing some of those things out because I needed to heal from some of that Isn't stuff. That crazy? Yeah. So like I think I think the pressing down that God was doing there for both of us was healing from some past traumas. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. Because like I know there's it, it's funny to me cuz like you go on these trips thinking you're you're top shape. Yeah. Like even when we went to that men's retreat, I I went seeking for the Lord to show me something, but I fully went one hundred percent thinking I was I was good and everywhere. But he's always got such a sense of humor because you think <laughs> you're so on point <laughs> with life and then he knocks you on the head and reminds you of like, Well, what about this time? Yeah. And so, like, you guys kind of answered a lot of my questions there on just, like, what God revealed to you in that. But now let's, like, turn a direction. What would you say was the funniest moment of the trip? Funniest moment of the trip. There's so many. Uh, there is? Yeah, well, that goofy horse, for one. Oh, that goofy horse was pretty entertaining. Yeah, he'd get his butt yeah. kicked so much, too, and he'd just keep asking for more. He really was like a homeschool kid. <laughs> uh, not that there's anything wrong with, with homeschool, homeschool kids, kids right? right. Okay. Like, we love homeschool kids. We have homeschool kids. But we can all agree we're weird, right? <laughs> uh, funniest moment. They're, they're, geez, that's hard to pin one down. Yeah, I don't I don't. I don't. Funniest. I don't know that there was a, a funniest Well, then moment. maybe not the funniest moment, but what was the most oh, I got memorable? It. Okay, I got it. Okay. I got it. Okay, so the joke about Pagosa Springs is it's kind of a Texas town, right? Yes, Like it is. everybody you meet is from Texas. Yes. So uh, <laughs> Joe Cox, so mm-hmm. last year when we were up there, I said, hey, Joe, have you, you ever seen any bears up here? And this was what Joe said. Joe said, well, I know they're here. But I've been coming here for 12 years, and I ain't seen one. And I said this, and I was like, well, I hate to warn you, but I'm kind of a bear magnet. Everywhere I go, there's bears. We see bears. Mm-hmm. And he, like, kind of laughs it off, right? We saw two bears yes, that sir. trip. 
when Ty and I literally got there and pulled into the trailhead and swinging the truck around, here's a bear. And I'm like, great. <laughs> like, this trip's going to go well. So we'd been there two or three days, and we're, we're riding down the trail, and there's these two lady hikers. And she says, have you guys seen any bears? And Ty's like, yeah, we saw one, uh, uh, you know, yesterday or the other day. And she's like, on this trail? And Ty goes, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then she goes, do you guys got guns? And we go, yeah, yeah. we're from Texas. And she goes... I'm from Texas, too. What's the rules? I, I left mine in the car. I usually always have my gun with me. And we and we kind of laughed. We were like, what part of Texas? And she was like, Ingram? And we're like, oh, yeah, we're, yeah, right down the road. So that was kind of funny. But yeah. we did we did wreck out her little trip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, she turned around. Up, yeah, they yeah. were there for their birthday. And uh, yeah. when we were coming back, they were already heading back to the trailhead and uh, mm, I yeah. should have had my gun and we were just kind of <laughs> driving about that. But, but yeah. like, you know, like that morning we had been talking about like how proud Texans are yes. and like, to, you know, just, uh, you know, God, guns, and freedom. Yeah. <laughs> and then to have that run in. <laughs> so, that was kind of funny. That was kind of funny. That's great. So then like, since he answered funniest moment, what would oh. be the most memorable moment of the trip? Man, I, I'm going to draw, I'm not going to say I draw a blank because it kind of, to me, the, mm -hmm. the the trip in general is one of those that, that I'm not going to forget. You know, yeah. uh, what about that water we hit? Oh, oh yes, There's on the way back. Yeah. Now that was actually kind of funny too. But that was on. That the, was that definitely was... memorable. Cause I, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I had extra underwear. I'm glad you did too. Yeah. Uh, we were on our way back. There were some wicked thunderstorms. Um, flash flood flash warnings. Flash flood warnings. The even. Uh, even the computer, the telephone was trying to tell us to take a different route. The how we don't want to go a different route, and it comes comes a, a floater, and Jeremy's up here driving like this, and I'm watching the road too, and I was like, man, he's got it. I look over here doing about seventy or so, and he's just like, oh, man, he's comfortable and roll with it. Well, we get to a spot just north of uh, Roswell, and it looked like they had just repaved the road. Mm -hmm. No, it was water. It was a pond. It was a pond. <laughs> we hit it, and I'm talking about complete blackout. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all we can see is we're talking about Mo Moses crossing the through the sea, <laughs> through yeah. the Red Jeez, Sea, you know. Man. And uh, um, I guess with the trailer on us, it pushed us pretty, yeah. tracked us pretty straight through yeah. that water. And uh, by the time the water starts subsiding, I'm laughing. I'm like, "Good job, buddy, man. Way to keep it on. He's locked up." <laughs> We need to pull over. <laughs> I need to check my shorts. <laughs> it was really scary. Oh, yeah, that was, that was pretty memorable. Yeah. But, uh, you know, other than that, uh, I think really the little things, being able to sit in, a, sit in the river, be able to catch those fish, be able to fry those fish up. I mean, we went, we went caveman style on, the, yeah. on, our, on those trout. And uh, just those little things like that, I, I, those are the moments that I hang on to. Yeah. At night when we'd get in the tent, too, that, uh, that was always kind of cool. I know that sounds weird, right? But, <laughs> like, you know, it's cold, and you're, like, trying mm -hmm. to hurry up, get changed so you can get in the bag. But, like, yeah. you know, we'd get snugged in, and we had a big gap. This was Yeah, yeah, yeah we're not snug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're not the opposite snug size of the tent. Yeah. yeah, the center was the gear off. Uh -huh. yeah. Clear line of separation. <laughs> Clear line of separation. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we'd talk back and forth, and I just, I, it's just peaceful, man. Like, yeah. no cell phones, like, no artificial light. Like, it was just... That was cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Memorable. Yeah. Memorable. Memorable. Yeah. Well, then that's going to kind of bring me to a close on this, but uh, I just want to go out on this podcast of like, if you were to recommend that, this to other people of taking mm -hmm. this trip or going on the trip with Joe Cox or something like that, what? how would you go about recommending this to other people? So... It, so it's true. Joe does have a hard time filling that roster every year. Uh, you know, he usually, whoever went on the trip the year before, he asked them to kind of pray and then nominate somebody to go. And he has a hard time filling it. And I get it because I just didn't necessarily want to jump on it either when mm -hmm. I got presented the opportunity. Uh, and I'd heard about it for a few years. I knew you went. I've known several other guys that went. Uh, I would say this. Most of us are, like Ty said, we don't really want to take a vacation. This sounds like it'll be some kind of hokey trail riding type deal. Go. Yeah. Like, go. It's so good. It's so uh, restorative. 
And if you go with Joe's group, you do get to meet some other pastors that uh, you get to fellowship with and build connections with. And like, you know, we met some on that trip last year that we still talk with. We're still talking yeah. with, man. It just kind of tightened up the community. And we need that, right? Mm-hmm. So I would tell you, even though everything's going to tell you not to go, make a commitment and go. And and for everybody else, take time to do something like that, man. It doesn't have to be an extravagant trip uh, 10 hours away. It could be finding something 30 minutes from your house just to go camping for a weekend to get away from everything to silence the noise and and reconnect it it is important even jesus retreated to the wilderness to pray yeah he went to the mountains to pray and and i agree with i agree with uh, jeremy 100 percent on this and going back to the not wanting to you know it's easy especially when you get closer to that trip to go to find those reasons not to go yeah um you got to bear down and just do it yes and it's again it's amazing to see how god will show up Mm-hmm. When you take that time to separate yourself from the world, or when you take that time to just concentrate on Him and be open, Lord, what is it that, like, you, I mean, even you mm-hmm. went through that same experience of, hey, I thought I'm good. Uh, I wouldn't say I was like that coming into this trip, but uh, either way, when you when you allow that time, when you separate yourself, turn off that dang stuff, cell phone get away from electronics get and just listen for that that whisper man it's a uh, don't pass up that opportunity yeah don't yeah. do not pass up that opportunity um, to do that and if you want to do the pack trip stuff um yeah definitely go with joe first <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely definitely go with joe first yeah um, yeah well, that wraps us up today. Uh, I just want to thank you all for tuning in on this podcast and thank each one of you guys for sharing a little bit about this trip and what it was like for you and what God revealed to you in it all and just the, the funny little stories behind it. But uh, if you're interested in a trip like this, uh, please reach out, leave a comment or something. We'll we'll get you lined out with Joe Cox uh, and uh, kind of tell more details about the trip uh but with that uh let me pray for us sure and uh then we'll get out of here dear heavenly father lord i thank you for this day i thank you for this time and lord i thank you for this ministry just uh allowing three men to come together lord and just to talk about a trip and to see how you can show up in every little thing that we do lord we thank you for moments to remind us that uh just how good it is to be in your presence when we step away from the noise and the distraction of the world, Lord, and to just allow you to be our our main focus, Lord. So we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. We thank you for your love and your grace, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you will continue to guide, guard, and direct our hearts. It's in your son's name. Amen. 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 There's our home. Ty built a good fire down here in this little valley. Oh, Sasquatch is real. <laughs> we go around. Go over here. Got the horses picking it out. Beautiful. I can't believe you don't want to live here. <laughs> Look down there. Let me zoom down there for you. See that water? Oh my goodness. I mean, what more do you need? All right, I love you. Tell the boys I found Bigfoot before them.